Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel with another version of the Instant Legolas. This time shooting steel balls, 11 of them in a row. <laughs> a new commercial product from out of China. Let me show you it. Features. <laughs> because those are really, really cool. Or would you not agree? <laughs> so much fun. Well, you've seen plenty of uh, Instant Legolas devices before. A lot of them homemade by myself, also by others in 3D printed. But there are now two commercial products out there and one is the uh, Steambow Fenris. Uh, expensive but well made. And there's also the much more affordable whip shot, which costs 450 euros complete with a bow made by EK Archery from out of Taiwan. But this here is actually the third model and it's very unique because it doesn't shoot arrows, but it shoots steel balls, 15 millimeter size. So the weight is just about 15 grams, very similar to an arrow shot from the whip shot. The whole thing is mostly made from aluminum. Uh, as you see, of course, white lightweight technique. And um, there is a little bit of, I think it's 3D printed, but this, yeah, I, I think so, the magazine part here. Well, the magazine part, you can simply put in more balls here. Actually, 10 of them fit in the magazine and one can already be loaded into the slot where it's held in place by a magnet. So steel balls only, no lead and no paint balls. Okay, let's shoot it over the crony. Eighty two meters per second. Again, eighty two meters per second. So it did eighty two meters per second three times in a row. Super consistent power, I think. And that is a lot of energy, actually. So we got 46 joule that is quite powerful i mean i can achieve the same fairly easily with a good slingshot but of course not with an aiming system like this and also this is very, very quick repeating uh, plus also it has the same advantage that all the uh, instant legolas devices have and this is that it requ requires almost no practice as soon as you're strong enough to draw the bow all you have to do is look through the red dot and then you're going to hit. Whereas with the slingshot, it takes a long time to really be proficient with it. That is not the case here. <laughs> so why steel balls when you can shoot arrows? Well, truth be told, arrows have a great advantage in terms of penetration. So if you want to hunt like larger game and so on, or if you want to use it for lethal self-defense, then an arrow, specifically with a hunting broadhead, is the much better choice. However, these are really cheap, <laughs> so you can get them really for not a lot of money from China, but also from Germany or from the US, because mostly there are bearings, like for ball bearings, that don't quite fit, that are a little bit too thick or a little bit too thin, or maybe have a tiny scratch, so that they get sorted out and then you can have them for dirt cheap. Therefore, it's cheap ammo and you typically shoot and forget. Maybe if you have a catch box, you find them later on, but if not, who cares? They're gonna crumble to rust anyhow sooner or later so and of course these are definitely not harmless i mean if you get hit by one of these it's going to be super painful and you probably have some broken bones definitely it's bleeding it will penetrate the skin and uh, i think if you hit an attacker somewhere on the upper body or even on the head that's it with the attack uh, game over and of plus also for small game like rabbits and so on uh, this is all you really need uh, I also think it's great target fun because it's so graphics if something like this a steel ball that big hits the target I mean I'm a slingshot man <laughs> look at me of course I love shooting steel balls with a with a bow can also show you how to load it it's very simple all you do is you move this to the front and lock it so that you got access to the ball magazine and then you simply take your steel balls and load them in okay I'll do that for you Grab a few steel bolts. Okay. Okay. And then you simply slide them in, like so.
And once you're ready, everything is under pressure now. Now the beauty of the design is that when you cock the weapon, automatically there is a lever integrated here that automatically pushes one ball down here. So it can actually not happen that more than one ball is uh, clocking this up. Now why hasn't this been done earlier? Well actually I tried. The problem is that the steel balls are extreme, extremely smooth. So the string actually wants to bypass it. It wants to squeeze sideways around it instead of accelerating it. And it requires a lot of precision to have the steel ball dead center in the slot so that the string has no choice but push it forward. Um, and this is something that in wood I was never able to manage. I always had to use a sled. Sleds also add weight and um, they also need to decelerate it uh, at the end of the acceleration. And it's very negative for the entire mechanics and it also reduces the energy. Now these guys here have solved that problem. The string is directly accelerating the steel ball. I've shot many steel balls with it and not once did it skip the ball. So I have to say that precision manufacturing solved that issue and I'm actually surprised that it worked. <laughs> but it does. Okay, as for an extreme accuracy test, over there at the end of the garden, probably like 60 meters from here, there is another dog food can. And I will try to hit it. It won't be easy because I have to hold over a little bit. So, wish me luck. <laughs> Almost. Ha! I got it. <laughs> nice. So does this have room for enhancements? Yes, a few things could be enhanced. For example, I'd love to be able to install one of these front holders so that once you cock it, you have something to hold on to, like here, right? That, like on the Fenris. It's also not available on the whip shop, but that would give me more stability and make it easier to aim and it's such a small change that I really would appreciate it. What I also think uh, could be enhanced is um, this setup here. Uh, I had to install a spacer and it would of course be better if that would be a little bit more flexible. I'm also not 100% sure if this magnetic holder here is accurate enough because I just have to draw it out aimed a little bit upwards. That's not comfortable. I prefer drawing it out downwards so that nothing can happen should I slip. <laughs> Nobody will be in danger. But um, I am a little afraid that then maybe, maybe, maybe the steel ball can run, can roll out the front. And therefore I draw out a little bit like here. Means the magnet could be a little stronger, I think. Other than that, it's really, really a good setup. It costs around 300 euros. I actually had to order it three times before I got it. First I ordered it on AliExpress and it never showed up, even though it said it had been delivered to my door. But there was no forwarder company that I could, that was listed, that I could approach. And therefore AliExpress gave me the money back since it's never arrived. Then I ordered it on Amazon and it also never showed up and I complained. And then the seller contacted me and asked me, begged me to actually withdraw my complaint. And then he sent me a new set, even at reduced price. So it's probably not that easy, but after all, just after a few months, I got it. So now I'm thinking maybe we should import it and offer it from Gogan, since it's such a nice setup. Not cheap, 300 euros plus the bow. So you end up paying certainly around uh, 500 to 600 euros for a complete setup. But then again, it's a lot of fun and it's a totally unique product. As always, I'm absolutely excited to see that my invention that I gave into the public domain has found one more commercial application. <laughs> so I hope that you like this thing because I do. <laughs> and that's it for today. Thanks and... Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, as always, one more for you. <laughs> Bang! Satisfaction! <laughs>